What's going on everyone? Just had another great month of getting paid to do absolutely nothing. No guys, not a scam. I actually make these videos every single month and I show proof of how I do it. In today's video, I'll share every company that paid me in the past 30 days. I'm just following a basic dividend growth investing strategy where I buy high quality companies that happen to pay a part of their earnings in the form of dividends to me and over time, those dividend payments just continue to get larger and larger. It almost sounds too good to be true. Nothing else can compare. I just can't keep my eyes off of dividend growth investing. So make sure you've hit that like button and you're subscribed so you don't miss out on these videos in the future. Dividend stocks aren't just in one sector. This is the list of 65 different dividend aristocrats, which are companies that have not only paid a dividend for 25 straight years, but also increased the amount that they've paid every single year. Some of these companies like 3M and Procter & Gamble have a 60 plus year streak of surviving recessions and everyday struggles to keep their dividends intact. We can see here on this pivot I made on what sector these dividend aristocrats belong to. Industrials and consumer staple stocks lead the pack. These are often the necessities we need every day that we don't even think about. It's hard for them to be replaced by technology and they aren't just the latest fads. Materials comes in at third place which is really interesting because for me personally, in my investing portfolio, I would have a 0% weight towards material sector if it weren't for the ETFs that I own. Yeah, I know, despite its name, Applied Materials is not a material sector company. Dividend aristocrats may not always have the most interesting business model, but at the end of the day, they provide a good or service, and most importantly, they make money consistently. What's also interesting is that there's only two tech companies on this list, and that would be IBM and the HR company ADP. Tech stocks have been really popular this past decade and have provided great returns, but lately they just have not been doing so hot. This just shows how important it is to be well diversified and really it's all part of having a well balanced portfolio. I'm sure Apple and Microsoft will one day join this list once they reach that 25 year mark of increased dividends. Let's move on to how much I made in options income. Times are getting tough these days guys. Neo and Palantir options used to be so juicy and now they're basically non-existent in their premiums these days. Just hoping for better days ahead as I still believe in the long-term outlook of these companies, but right now I'm just doing really far out of the money calls and collecting really small premiums. The only bright spot for now is that I've been getting decent returns doing the wheel strategy on ChargePoint as they do offer some pretty solid premiums. And another positive is that SoFi is expected to become a public company officially finally later this month. It's been a really long time, but that merger looks like it's finally going to be put to a vote and go through. Now, I already own 100 shares of what is right now SoFi and IPOE. I'll officially do that merger and the ticker will change and then I'll start doing options from there. So we're on a downwards direction here, but let's just hope that it gets better. And at the end of the day, I still made $148 for the month of April, which isn't too bad. And just over $1,000 for the full year. In the grand scheme of things, I think I'm still doing pretty solid. Now let's get into the real reason why you clicked this video, and that's to go over the stocks that paid me this past month. To start off with, we have the REIT Medical Properties Trust. I own about 66 shares of them, and they paid me $18.76. Not a bad way to start off the month. Let's keep going here. So we also got paid $2.34 from Chubb. This is an insurance company that's not based in the United States, but is based out in Europe. Moving on to the next stock, and that would be O Realty Income, and they paid me a whole $4.50. What's also really cool about Realty Income and not Reality Income is that I have the drip enabled on them. So every month they not only pay me dividends, but it's also repurchasing into more shares of O, and that's really gonna start to compound and just increase my returns in the long run. Moving on to the next stock here, and that is another REIT, and that is Store Capital. And they paid me $9 on the dot. Another great REIT here. Do remember though, if you do buy REITs, they usually, unless you hold them in a tax advantaged account, you're gonna be paying pretty high taxes on REITs as they're treated as basically ordinary income. Let's move on to the next stock here, and that would be Medtronic. They paid me a whole $4.64. This is another dividend aristocrat actually becoming, pretty close to becoming a dividend king that doesn't get much traction. But this is a great healthcare stock that's actually had a pretty recent run up in stock price as well. So love me some Medtronic. 
Next stock would be Nusi. Now this is an income-based ETF. Been slowly adding to Nusi almost on a weekly basis now. Trying to get close to 100 shares of them. Right now they paid me $6.85. They pay out every single month and it's gonna be a lot larger than $6.85 next month. Then we move on to QILD. This one, much like Nusi, is another income-based ETF. So they do a lot of options trading on the NASDAQ top 100 stocks, and that's how they're able to produce monthly consistent income for us. So they paid out $22.83 to me. Pretty nice knowing that basically for the rest of my life, assuming that QILD and the people in charge of it continue to do a great job, they're gonna be paying me monthly income. All right, the next company that paid me was actually an ETF, and that is QQQ, the triple Qs. And for some reason, they were split among two different uh, transactions here. But total is $4.34. Just bought another share of the triple Qs, and I now think that the triple Qs are actually now the largest position in my portfolio. This is basically covering the top 100 technology companies uh, with a little bit of diversification in other sectors. So when you own QQQ, you're really owning Amazons, the Apples, the Teslas in the world, NVIDIAs, PayPals, a lot of great companies in this basket at ETF, which is the triple Qs. All right, let's keep moving on here. So I also received a dividend from SPHD. This one was for 76 cents, which is actually a little bit lower than the usual dividend payments I get, around 90 cents, but 76 cents will do just fine for now. As we move into the next stock, and that would be JP Morgan Chase. They paid me a whole $10.80. Wow, the share price of JP Morgan Chase has just been it's just been growing up and up. Really excited to see if they will increase that dividend in the future. It's been at 90 cents per quarter for quite some time. Honestly, I've been looking for some sort of pullback to buy more shares of Chase, but they just continue to go up and it's hard to just buy in, but eventually I think I'm just gonna have to bite the bullet. And the next stock we have is NRZ. This is still going strong after all this time. It's now paying me $2.40 per quarter. And then we move on to a newcomer here in Spy. This is the first time that they've ever paid me a whole $1.28. Currently only own two shares of them, but this is basically just another ETF that I own to get further diversification, uh, more of a safer investment, really just betting on the overall US economy doing good in the long run, which throughout history has always been a safe bet. So paid me a whole $1.28. We'll slowly be adding to SPY and hopefully we'll be able to one day do options trading on SPY. Altogether, we had 12 different companies slash ETFs pay me in April 2021 for a total of $88.50. That is a 171% increase from just one year ago when I only made $32.66. Now, obviously a big chunk of this increase was the income ETFs that I added this past year that I didn't have last year. So I've really been adding into my QILD and NUSI positions. You know when the stock market has been as volatile and as depressing as it's been lately, having some of these dividends come in, it really does give you a few boosts of dopamine before you reinvest and watch your money just burn yet again. For the year, I'm making $412, which it took all the way of August of last year to hit that milestone, and it's already happened to me in just four months. That's also more than I made my entire freshman and sophomore years of investing combined. My goal at by the end of the year is to get each month averaging at least $150 in dividends, so I certainly have a lot of work to do to get to that milestone by December. I would say I'm still making more money going to the bathroom at work than doing dividend investing, but every month I'm just getting closer and closer to financial freedom and those goals that I've set for myself one month at a time. I really hope you can see the progression in my portfolio and that dividend growth investing can be very profitable strategy if done right. I make videos like this all the time, so if you've enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any questions, I'd love to interact with you in the comments below or shoot me a message on Instagram at Citizen of the Year. Also remember that we're available anywhere that you get your podcasts under the Collect Cash podcast name. And don't forget to buy stash collect cash